I guess, well, I just assumed that most of my followers knew who Rufus was. These goats won't hurt you. They might try to lick you. Oh, that's Lambert. She's a big wuss. Don't worry about her. <laughs> and Rufus was going. <laughs> hey, Rufus. <laughs> Quit it, bro. Quit it. Goats, goats, and only goats. Steve, you get back. Come on, goats. Just goats, just goats. Come on, goats. You girls go graze with them. Keep an eye on those goats for me. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Excuse me, pardon me. Good morning, Steve. There's Pepper. Y'all gonna have you gonna come have breakfast with me? Hey Ralph, how do you like your eggs? Uh, over easy or are you a scrambled kind of guy? You like probably avocado toast with, on wheat, huh? You like a whole wheat avocado toast? It's a little warm. Sorry, I don't have any fresh avocados for you. Uh, you don't share very well. More toast? I always feed you guys first thing in the morning. Why not feed myself? Let me eat first. I gave you food while I go. Okay, fine. How about a piece of toast? So today's video is sponsored by EcoFlow because EcoFlow just released their new Delta 2 series. The new Delta 2 is a lot smaller than the original Delta series, and I think it weighs in at like 27 pounds. This one's like light enough that just about anybody can handle it, but this thing is more than just a battery. You know, I'm kind of joked around this morning to come out and cook breakfast out here in the pasture. I was trying to have breakfast with RJ. <laughs> he didn't want to come up, but I was able to power that uh, Keurig coffee pot, my griddle, my toaster, everything all off of just the Delta II. Now, the thing about this is it's expandable. You can get the extra batteries. So this is basically an extra power source that I can plug into this and double the amount of power I have. But we've partnered with EcoFlow for quite a while. And you've seen me do all kinds of stuff at our off-grid cabin with them. We got the new power kit installed out there. But, you know, I, I showed you guys a while back with our original Delta series. And this is probably going to be even better but i i liked having that uh, safety and security of backup power because you just never know when you're going to lose power now i've told you guys before i'm not a tech and spec kind of guy but let me tell you a little bit about this thing it's really incredible so you're going to get longer runtime with a unique one to three kilowatt hour expandable capacity design the delta 2 offers a large 1024 kilowatt hour battery and it's expandable up to 2,048 uh, watt hours with the with the Delta II um, extra battery. The Delta II has a powerful 1,800 watt AC output. It's going to power up to about 90% of your home appliances. Everything from like what you saw earlier to uh, refrigerators and all kinds of stuff. You're not going to overload this thing very easily because it has EcoFlow has what they call X Boost, so it's going to get you that. It's like 2,200 watts when you first when something first kicks on like like that griddle or my toaster when those things first kick on they jump up a lot of power and then they kind of settle in or a air conditioner like in my uh in my garage when that window unit air conditioner kicks on that compressor really kicks in 
and then it kind of brings it back down. So you're gonna get that 2200 watt surge. You're not gonna overpower this thing with very many appliances. So the Delta II offers incredibly fast charge times. It's the, the fastest AC charging with revolutionary extreme technology. It'll go from zero to 80% charged in 50 minutes when you're plugged into a wall outlet. Um, it's a little bit longer if you're gonna do solar. There's so many different ways. You can charge it through the wall outlet, through solar. You see our solar panel set up here. You can charge it in the 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter in your vehicle. There's a lot of different ways to charge this thing. The battery, so I keep saying it's, it's not just a battery, it's a solar generator, but the battery in these things is basically the, the exact same battery that you would see in a Tesla. So you're gonna get like 3000 cycles. So if you run this thing, charge it up to I think it's 80 or 85% and back down to zero, you're gonna get over 3000 cycles. That's like 10 years if you're using this thing just about every day. So with EcoFlow, you get so many different ways that you can plug things in. You got two USB-A, two S, two USB-A fast charge, then two USB-C, those are a hundred watt. And then on the back side, you can charge, plug in, you can plug in up to six different appliances here. And then your, you know, conventional uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter plug, if you got something that you want to plug in there. One really cool thing about the uh, uh, everything that EcoFlow has is their app. You can download an app and go in and you can see how much power is going out of your appliances, how much power is coming into your appliances, and a whole lot of other important information. So as I've said, the EcoFlow Delta II is not just a battery, but a, an essential home appliance, whether for daily home use, outdoor travel, a handy and eco-friendly power solution for your family's um, power needs anytime and anywhere. Be sure to check the link in the description box. Go check out EcoFlow's website. They're having a, uh, this, this is just released. The Delta II is brand new. It just hit the website I recently, a few days ago, maybe a week or two ago. And my goal this morning was to have breakfast with RJ. But uh, Dolly was like, eh, I'm not sure about that fried, those fried eggs and sausage out here in the pasture. But uh, RJ is just uh, getting so much, so much more friendly all the time. He'll hang out with me for a while and then he'll go want to be with mom. Him and Steve are, you know, not exactly friends yet, but we're trying. We're trying. So I thought I'd sit down today and go over a few things because I guess, well, I just assumed that most of my followers knew who Rufus was. And that was silly of me. Not everybody knows or remembers Rufus. And uh, we're gonna go over the a little bit of history, uh, who Rufus was, why he was um, significant to us, and how in the world did he give us a baby when he was uh, sterile, huh, Bella? So you have to go all the way back to October of 2019 to back when we first brought home our alpacas. We brought home, easy pepper. We brought home Dolly, Tina, Lucy, and Rufus. We'd never had alpacas before, and this was a whole new experience for us. And uh, boy, were we in for a treat. So, I, saw, I saw them spitting. Let's see you give one a kiss then. Um, I don't I don't think they want me that close to them yet. Mm, Maybe I'll not their head. We're not close enough yet. <laughs> I am. We've got to spend some more time with each other. What do you think? This is exciting. <laughs> this one said she was scared of them. They are. I'm scared. What are they're... you scared of? Hey, they're gonna God. do something to me. What are they gonna do to look at them? I don't know, but they're scary. <laughs> they're not scary. They're baby camels. Exactly. That's miniature, scary. miniature camels. <laughs> Come on, donkey poodle. <laughs> Come on. Easy. Easy. Come on. These goats won't hurt you. They might try to lick you. Oh, that's Lambert. She's a big wuss. Don't worry about her. <laughs> when we first brought these ladies and gentlemen home, uh, we had no idea what we were getting into with alpacas. We'd never raised alpacas. We'd never even been around alpacas, but it was something that DJ wanted to get into. What's up, little RJ? 
and Rufus was a handful from the beginning. The females were pretty easy going, not a whole lot to them. They're, they're pretty uh, laid back and calm. They did not like to be touched and petted or anything, but with general care and maintenance, you know, you have to worm them for parasites and you've got to catch them and shear them and all that stuff. And Rufus was always just a little bit cantankerous and anytime you had to catch him, he got wound up or if you were trying to catch another animal even like steve or freedom or one of the other donkeys or goats rufus was like the farm protector and anytime i touched another animal on the farm rufus had something to say about it there we go bella move you're blocking the camera rufus move you're blocking the camera Are you here? <laughs> I got Isaac. Yeah, I'll open the gate for you. Woo! You blocked the camera. Hey, Rufus! <laughs> quit it! Bro, quit it! Open the gate. Open the gate. Other way. Go the other way. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! Come on, Isaac. And Rufus was going. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Rufus, <laughs> quit it. Now, one thing with alpacas that we were not, um, I guess you'd say prepared for, is the uh, mating rituals. It's not like Steve. I mean, Steve is straightforward and to the point. Rufus and alpacas in general, um, it's, a, uh, it's a spectacle. It takes a while. And the females cush and lay down when the males try to breed and there's a lot of humming and a lot of noises and um, it was so funny because DJ would get totally embarrassed. Hey, dude, that's a turd. Well, I guess you gotta start somewhere. <gasps> I got you. Rufus, man, come on. You're embarrassing me in front of the ladies. Act like a dude. Oh. oh. What was that? Did you get a whiff of something you like, buddy? <laughs> you got this. You, you whine all day long wanting to be close to your girls. Oh. Oh. Hey. Don't kick the baby. <laughs> Jeez. Hey. Uh oh. God. <laughs> what? Oh. Was that Hello. one of the five love um, languages? I think, I think, uh... Well. That might be a signal that. Um, Oh dear. Now that might be one of the love languages. That's that's a love language. I'm not, I'm not real sure. I feel like I need to go back to the house. I just don't. The noise is. It's just getting me. I can't. I can't. Uh, it's just it's alpaca love. <laughs> now the first time we were expecting baby alpacas, we really, well, we didn't know what to expect. So we took... Uh, Dolly and Tina here to a veterinarian and had them preg checked. He did an ultrasound and he said, Tina, the brown one right here is pregnant. She's six months along. You can expect a baby Korea in about another six months. Dolly, wide open, not pregnant, no possibility. And that's what we went with. That's what we thought. Six months later rolls by. We have Tina had a baby and we thought, awesome. We've got our first baby alpaca. Well, about I don't remember exactly to the day, but about a week later, came outside, and this gal right here had a baby on the ground, a white one, a little white baby alpaca. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted by animals over here. And um, so they're gone, they're not home yet, and I'm taking care of the animals, feeding, and I came out, and look what we have. Oh my gosh! She was pregnant after all. Look at this. So, as you can see, we have a brand new snow white alpaca baby, donkey poodle baby. Yes. And then uh, Houston and I came down to feed today. Houston wanted to come check on the baby. And uh, we have a little issue. We have a little issue that we were not expecting what? with a baby alpaca. Well, it's standing funky. Just go in. Oh my god! Oh my god! What the hell? Oh my god! Oh my god! There's another baby! Oh my god! What the hell? So, we did not think she was pregnant. Oh my god! Oh my god! 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Look at it. Look at here. <laughs> now let's see Lucy have one. Tina. Oh my Tina wasn't even supposed to be pregnant. Oh my goodness. We had two baby packets. Oh. You're not going to let me get close? Is she not going to let me get close? Well, she's not sure about it. Now we had no idea that uh, she was pregnant even after taking her to the veterinarian. He was like, your white alpaca dolly, not pregnant. Tina, she is. And uh, he missed it. I mean, it is what it is. But we raised two babies, ended up selling them to a friend um, after they were weaned off and they went to a petting zoo. Well, fast forward after that, then we start trying to breed again. So gestation for alpacas is anywhere from like 11 to 13 months. It's crazy. It's wild. Um, most people say 11 to 12 months, but we've seen them go about 13. Anyway, so we turned Rufus back in with his ladies. And then at that point, uh, Lucy, our youngest female here, was old enough to be bred. They have to be two years, two years old. And she was coming two years old or had passed two years old and turned Rufus in with all three females and he started doing rufus things started trying to breed everybody we left rufus in a lot of alpaca breeders say take the male to the females for breeding then take them out and don't leave them in but we left rufus in with these three females full time like for, he had free reign of breeding options and after about six months or so of constant well not constant but he he kept breeding them every few weeks he was trying to breed and trying to breed and trying to breed and we're like everything we'd been told and everything we'd read is if an alpaca female is pregnant she won't allow the male to breed she'll spit on him and fight and then you know she's pregnant you can pull the male out and then just wait so after about six months rufus was still trying to breed him so we took him back to the veterinarian and had a semen test done and that vet told us rufus was sterile and that was devastating for us it was heartbreaking for our family and for our farm because rufus was had become a a huge character on our channel and a great um just animal to have on the farm he was so much fun he had so much more personality than these females he was just into everything he was curious about everything he followed you around you know so then we had a sterile male what do we do because we wanted to breed the females. So we started looking for another male and that was where Jerry came in. And Jerry's in the other pasture over there right now. You can kind of see him back there. Jerry, we brought Jerry in, but kept Rufus separate from the females, you know. Well, we didn't want to get rid of Rufus because he had become such a big part of our farm. So we contacted actually a different veterinarian, the veterinarian that we use for a lot of other stuff dr green who's taken really good care of um our baby donkey situation lately anyways dr green came out to our farm and castrated rufus for us so because we wanted to keep him around here hold so on. rufus here yep made it home from the vet yeah do you want to go put him up before we tell everybody what's going on i don't care it's a sad day here a little disappointed in you sir Yeah, so uh, Rufus uh, is no longer going to be able to make babies. It's very sad. So now we've got Jerry, who we were hoping would breed all of our females who hadn't been bred. But let me back up a little bit. You remember I said Rufus kept trying for months and months and months. Well, before we had him semen tested, the last time that we recorded rufus attempting to breed and i don't mean recorded on video which i have it on video but recorded and you know noted that rufus was breeding i believe was august of 2021 and he was breeding dolly but the vet had told us he's shooting blanks he's no longer uh fertile he's uh not gonna be able to have babies anymore so we, you know, obviously had seen him trying for months and didn't think a whole lot about it. So when it rolls around, <laughs> oh my goodness, early September 2022, which 
you think about that like that's it was over a year i come outside one day minding my own business just taking care of the animals and dolly doesn't come up and she's out here in the pasture and i'm like what in the world is going on and lo and behold i saw where's little rj little rj was hanging out right underneath his mom and it shocked me at first i was like wait a minute Rufus has been gone. Rufus hasn't been able to breed. He's been sterile for way over a year, like a year and a half um, from the first time he started breeding these three females. It was literally like a year and a half before RJ was born. So it blew my mind. There's RJ. What's up, buddy? So as you can see, we were totally blindsided by the birth of RJ because first off, Rufus had been attempting to breed for well over a year and a half, and we should have had a baby. If he had done his job or was able to do his job, we should have had babies on the ground six months before RJ was born. So we were just assuming no baby. And I'm telling you what, this little female alpaca right here is impossible to tell when she's carrying a baby. Like when it comes to goats or cows or donkeys or horses when they're heavy bred you can tell it dolly hides it very well and we completely missed it the first time the veterinarian missed it the first time so second time around we had no expectations of her having a baby until a year after you know jerry was turned in with her so we're celebrating this surprise little baby who's using the bathroom over there as uh, a total miracle for our farm Ain't that right, Pepper? Did you expect RJ to be here? Uh, no? Come here. RJ. He said, no, come on, go to Mom. He chose Mom. Fine. He's trying to jump on her. Yeah. So you missed out on breakfast. I know. I've been working. I'm sorry. Oh, look, she's kind of spitting at me. <laughs> she said, get off me for a minute. So I hope that helps some of you understand why uh, RJ is such a big deal to us, such a big thing for our farm right now, and why Rufus was uh, so special to us. He was a cool, cool animal. One of the coolest animals we've ever had on the farm, I think, when it comes to amount of personality and just... The character that he was, was uh, so much fun. And I didn't go into all the detail about how we lost Rufus. If you want to see all that, there's there's videos on that. You'll have to go back and look them up. But uh, I don't want to go and talk about all that right now. <clears throat> Anyways, go find that video if you want to know what happened to Rufus. <sighs> it was a bad day. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. Huge, huge, huge thank you to EcoFlow for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to go check them out. Um, We've partnered with EcoFlow for a long time, and uh, they've been great for us, great for our channel, and uh, I know a lot of you guys enjoy their products too. So, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.